Hey everyone, Adam from the Aeroworks Productions Workshop, and today we're gonna to be covering some really cool products by FLIR. Let's get started. First, we wanna talk about uh, how we kinda of got started with FLIR and UAV. So, uh, it wasn't until just about a year, year and a half ago, that if you wanted to put a thermal imaging sensor on your UAS, you had to basically go out and find something that was built for more of the commercial side and try and adapt it to your UAS, your drone, what have you. Um, that was kind of okay to do, but you either had a very low resolution camera or you had a very expensive camera. In some cases, you had both. So FLIR recognized that a lot of people were putting these FLIR sensors on their UAS and they decided to branch off into the consumer grade or professional uh, FLIR sensor for UAS. So about a year ago, they came out with what's called the FLIR View, and this was essentially a trimmed down version of one of their other professional cameras. They took off some of the sensors and brackets and things you didn't need for a drone, and they basically gave you the camera, and they gave you a mount that basically mounted on any kind of a GoPro adapter. Uh, that was great. Again, provided the, the thermal imaging that we needed, the problem was they really didn't have a, any other parts to go with it, so you had to come up with your own video transmitter, a power source, uh, it was still a fixed mount. This is actually a setup that we rigged up on our original Inspire uh, using an old FPV mount and a GoPro adapter and some other things, and that gave us basically a fixed view of the ground. We, we didn't have a stabilized gimbal, but we did have thermal uh, imaging. Now, FLIR, very shortly after releasing the FLIRView, uh, they came out with the FLIRView Pro. And the difference in the two, they had the same options as far as lenses and sensor size, but the FLIRView Pro actually added onboard recording uh, with a small micro SD card. So that allowed you to do both video and stills. Um, the downside to that is you had to start and stop the camera on the ground, or the sensor I should say, on the ground because there was no way to control it. Now they did come out with some additional cables. If you had uh, an additional radio or receiver, you could actually switch to the color palettes. Again, a little cumbersome, not quite all there. Camera's great. Um, and, and we use the word camera loosely because they, these are actually sensors. Uh, they're a heat sensor, they're not a camera, but just for the purpose of the video, a lot of people call them cameras, thermal cameras, we can mention them as cameras. So again, Great for search and rescue. This is, uh, you know, when you're not filming for cinematic type shots, you don't need a stabilized gimbal. All you need to know is, is there somebody missing in those woods? Is there a fire about to break through that roof? And these, the FLIR View and the FLIR View Pro would do that. Now let's take it up a step. So they realized that people were buying into the thermal imaging um, and they decided that let's work with one of the largest UAV manufacturers out there, DJI, who's making a lot of the copters that we're putting these on, and we've got this great Zenmuse gimbal technology. Let's marry up and match up the FLIR uh, sensor technology and put it on a gimbal. And that brought us the XT. Now the XT is slightly different. It's a better sensor. It's actually about, uh, based off the Tau 2 sensor that's uh, been around for a long time and then they put on a full three axis gimbal. Now what does that give us over the original FLIR View and the FLIR View Pro? Well, it gives us a lot. Not only are we getting a stabilized gimbal, but we're getting full integration into the DJI Go app, which means that not only can we start and stop the video uh, or stills from the ground, we can switch the color palettes, we can move the camera around, we can do all the things that we would have to do manually on the ground using Bluetooth, we can now do through our DJI Go app. Now there are still several options, whether you get an XT or you get a FlearView Pro, you have to first decide on the sensor size. So these come in a typical either 640 or a 336 sensor size, and that may sound like really low resolution for video guys, you know, 640 is like old time, you know, VHS, but in thermal sensing, 640 is actually really high quality, and that's actually almost high definition in the thermal world. Uh, your next option is going to be the refresh rate. So you have an option of nine hertz or 30 hertz, and what that basically means is how many frames a second do you wanna see? So do you wanna see nine, you wanna see 30? 
The reason they came out with those too is there is a little bit of a price difference, usually $500 or $1,000 difference depending on which model you buy. The big thing is, is the export. Uh, exporting some of this technology to other countries is very limited and the 9 hertz is typically the only the one that can go to those countries. The 30 hertz is somewhat limited. Uh, you'd have to check with the experts on which ones you can choose to go outside of the US. So your first choice is your resolution. The second choice is your refresh rate. The last choice is your lens size. So depending on the resolution you get uh, is going to depend on what your lens options are and they range from anywhere from 7 millimeters all the way up to 19 millimeters. And it also depends on the industry you're in. If you're doing inspections, if you're just doing search and rescue, if you're doing agricultural uh, uh, jobs, these are all gonna determine what lens you put on the sensor that you have. So one thing we, we do wanna say, we wanna thank the guys at Rocky Mountain Unmanned for hooking us up today with the XT. Um, we're gonna be running this through a lot of different tests to show you guys. We've already done a lot of tests with the View and the View Pro and in search and rescue applications. We're going to be using the XT in a, in a couple different uh, commercial inspection type applications. Um, but if you do have any questions about the XT, the FLIR View, the FLIR View Pro, or some of the new radiometric uh, models that are coming out, you want to go ahead and give uh, Rocky Mountain Unmanned a call. We'll put the number right down here and talk to John or JT and let them know that uh, Adam from Arrowworks sent you and they'll get you all squared away. So guys, brief introduction to FLIR. Again, these are FLIR sensors, not FLIR cameras, and uh, unlimited possibilities of what these are being used for. Everything from inspections, roof inspections, to thermal imaging of solar panels and wind turbines, power plants, uh, where they're being used in farming. Obviously, search and rescue and fire is a huge one. Uh, these are really invaluable tools when you're out there in a dark area, you're in a wooded area, and you're trying to find that missing animal, missing child. These things uh, do the trick and they do it very well and they do it a lot cheaper than the full-size aircraft. Again, full-size aircraft, you bring a helicopter out, you're talking $1,500 to $3,500 an hour minimum and that's only if the aircraft can actually get here and get here in time. Uh, these now make it possible for a patrol car, an officer, a firefighter to take these out of their vehicle and be in the air in less than five minutes. And, and uh, if you're talking about life saving and, and force multiplier, these things do the trick and it's just another tool in the toolbox to help you get your job done and to get it done safely. So again, check out Rocky Mountain Unmanned Systems. I'm Adam from Arrowworks. Let them know we sent you there. And stay tuned for more reviews on these products. We're gonna be doing some real world scenarios with both products and they'll be here on our channel. So stay tuned, make sure you like and subscribe. And we'll see you shortly.